just go ahead and interrupt me. But this is imposter scam part two. And so we're going to cover uh, romance scam, charity scam, family emergency scam, and the grandparent scam. So if you combine these four with the other four we did uh, last week, uh, these are the eight most common imposter scams out there. They're, they're not the only imposter scams that are out there, uh, but these are the ones that usually make the top 10 list of, of, of scams. Now, identity theft is one of those <laughs> top 10 as well. So, all right. And that's who I am. <laughs> and if you recall, you know, what an imposter is, I think we all know what an imposter is, uh, most of us. And it's a positive person who pretends to be someone else. Uh, this happens in real life, uh, and, they, and they, they're not necessarily so not all imposters are criminals, uh, you know. And we we run into these folks probably on a daily basis. Um, but the ones that we're concerned about uh, are the ones that are dishonest. And what they want to do is they want to steal your money, and they want to get as much personal information about you as possible, which would then lead to what we've talked about earlier, which is that identity theft. Now these folks are gonna call you. They're gonna send you an email, could do things through the mail, uh, or they could text you, or they could knock on your door, uh, offering you a great deal on a new deck. You know? right. So what this little graphic is trying to tell you is that scammers don't care about you. They, they just wanna reach behind and grab the money out of your, out of your back pocket. All right. And, just want to, again, just let you know that any fraud or scam is an illegal activity. Uh, and it's a dishonest trick to get money from people. And I think <clears throat> common sense would tell us that. But common sense also tells us <clears throat> is that, well, if everybody used common sense all the time, there wouldn't be any scamming going on. Well, there's the issue. Not everybody uses common sense all of the time. You know, uh, we have emotional swings. We have uh, moments of being high. We have moments of being low. Uh, and so the scammers are always working 24 seven. So, uh, you know, there, there's no one that's, that's going to be uh, not uh, a victim uh, if they don't really take care of their financial information. And why seniors? I think we went through this uh, last week. Uh, but again, the, the major thing is that seniors usually have the nest egg. Uh, and uh, so they're open and seniors are more open to claims for quick profits. I think I mentioned Medicare last year, last week. Uh, absolutely, it's, a, it's one of the fastest growing scams out there. Um, seniors, I put myself in this category as well, and I am a senior. We're polite, <laughs> we're trusting, and we respect authority. So we get messages, uh, whether it's from the IRS or from someone else, uh, and whether it's good news or bad news, uh, we're trusting about that, and we respect the authority. We're either very thrilled, in case of a sweepstakes uh, scam, uh, you know, you just got $1.5 million, um, or you're, you're kind of scared because it's the IRS telling you they're going to come out and arrest you if you don't pay your back taxes. Um, and so a lot of times seniors are still having a landline. Uh, Cynthia, do you have a landline? No. Yeah. Uh, do you know, do you crawl when you got rid of it? Uh, well, it's only about two years ago. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I see. I was the last person in my family to get rid of my landline as well. I'm a slow learner, um, and so uh, and right. So we're all using cell phones. And would you consider your cell phone a smartphone? Yes. Okay. Smarter than me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. So uh, and smartphones uh, are computers. So uh, there you go. Uh, a lot of times, seniors, particularly what I consider. Older seniors, and I hate, don't want to put you in a pigeonhole you or anything. I'm not even going to ask. Uh, but when I talk about older, I'm talking about people that are 80 and older uh, are probably a little less savvy on technology. The, the seniors that are coming up now have been in business, and they've probably had to have some training on computers, and so they understand that. Uh, and, and my children, and probably your grandchildren, uh, and my grandchildren are sort of born with this uh, innate knowledge of technology and computers. Uh, I'm going to them. Yeah, I'm going to them all the time. There are many cases where seniors, uh, because of longevity, uh, are single, uh, and uh, you know, being single, 
single isn't necessarily a precursor to being lonely. Um, but lo being lonely is, is, is kind of a fact of life uh, if you live long enough and you're by yourself. Uh, sometimes, as you, everybody would, would, would agree to, that um, aging does affect memory. You know, it does affect memory. And the major thing here that I hope you get out of this, uh, Cynthia, uh, is that uh, we need to report scams. Uh, and seniors are less likely to do that. Uh, and maybe whether they're embarrassed or they don't, they want to take the time or they just want to move on. Um, and the bottom line is, is if we don't report them, they continue. And, uh, and, and if we do report them, there is a chance, small as it is, that uh, they can get caught, thrown in jail, someone melts the key, and they can stay in jail for a long time. That's, that's, the, that's the key here. All right, romance scams. Let's go ahead and get into this. <clears throat> and uh, just as a, a little background, I worked uh, in Seattle uh, as a volunteer with AARP there, and I was trained on fraud in their office. Uh, and took many calls on the phone and also made a lot of calls outside to folks, the victims, uh, and received calls from victims or members of their family. And this is the one scam that uh, it was hard for me uh, to provide an answer that would work 100% of the time. Uh, and this particular scam is where scammers will create a fake profile, uh, even a fake gender. So I see this photo I got up here, the picture looks like a, a mask guy talking to uh, a, a woman, a girl, female. And, um, and, and so that, the mask guy could be male or female. You, you just don't know uh, on, a, on a romance game. And they create pro fake profiles and they do this on dating apps or social media sites like Facebook. And they trick people into sending money. But it doesn't happen quickly. It doesn't happen quickly. Um, and uh, the scam occurs when a criminal adopts a fake identity to gain a victim's affection first, trust second, money third. But the primary objective is to get money. It has nothing to have to do with love, romance, affection, any of those things that uh, a lot of us really uh, are attracted to. You know, everybody likes romance. Everybody. Uh, likes affection. Everybody wants to be loved. Uh, and there are certain points in our lives that uh, this becomes more of a need than others. So a scammer is going to use an illusion of a romantic or close relationship to manipulate the victim. And I say victims because it's, it's, it's important to understand that people who get abused like this are victims. They're not criminals. The criminals are on the other side of that, uh, <laughs> the side of that photo there. It's on the right side. Uh, and, and they try to do this by using, by developing a close relationship. And and the main goal again is to steal money. Scammers in this particular scam, like all scams actually, are very smooth operators. They are good at what they do. They're professionals. Um, and it's a business. It's a $50 billion industry with a B there, not, not an M, it's a B for billion. Uh, and they take their time to the trap. Uh, it's my guess that romance scammers aren't just picking on one person, but 10 or more victims, some along that, uh, that timeline of, of being scammed. Um, you know, and so there's, there's no emotional feeling that they have that's genuine other than their objective is, is to get money. <clears throat> A lot of this happens on dating sites. Now, I, I have to have, you know, there, there's a precursor here, and that is dating sites are legitimate sites. And there's a lot of people that uh, use those dating sites, and it works out really well. Um, and it's, it's one way of meeting people face-to-face -face after you've been on the site and possibly developing a relationship. <clears throat> but these dating sites, they pop up and they promise that they're promising a match. And all of a sudden you get this good looking person there and it, that person looks very attractive. Uh, and they probably have done their homework and sending you this picture uh, of them uh, as to what you might be looking for. 
And, and so it looks, it looks pretty reasonable, right? Okay, so what happens is the victim, uh, or in this case, the scammer, seems to be smitten and very eager to get to know you better. It says that you move your relationship to a private channel like email. They want to get you off the, uh, the dating site where things can be tracked to a more private site like email or something is referred to as a chat app. So they can have you and that person can have um, a, a private conversation essentially. And like I said before, they take their time. So over weeks or even months, uh, uh, the, the victim will start to feel uh, a growing affection for the scammer. And uh, it goes and it gets uh, more in depth and the affection happens and possibly falling in love over email. Amazing, but it can happen. So you meet, try to make plans to meet this person. But for some reason, it never happens. Always something comes up. At some point in a romance scam, money has got to come into the, into the game. And it could be uh, a medical emergency they have. It could be a business emergency. A lot of these scams take place uh, from overseas. They could be claiming they're in the military or they could be claiming that the they're a uh, executive with a corporation that has invested a lot of money personally into a business and uh, they're, they're coming up with a crisis and they just need to have a bridge loan or something like this. Uh, and then they're going to express that to you and they need to have the victim wire money and do it quickly. Well, at this point in time, the, tra the trap has been set. The trap has been set and there's all likelihood that the victim uh, is head over heels for this individual, whether it's male or female that they, that they think is on the other uh, line of the uh, email. And the kicker here is that scammers, these romance scammers, are going to continue to ask and demand for more money until you stop. And this is where it gets sad for me because uh, I'll tell you one story, and that is, uh, and there's a lot of stories I could tell you on this one. Uh, it was about a woman who uh, got caught up in the scam and she absolutely believed that this person loved her. And for a lot of these reasons, they could not, um, they could not meet uh, publicly. Uh, he had, he did, he had medical emergencies, he had investment, uh, things fall apart. Uh, uh, you know, all kinds of excuses, whatever, I mean, there's a hundred excuses that they could use. Uh, but he kept, he needed more and more money in order to get that. As soon as he got this money, he was going to solve everything, jump on the plane. Uh, they even had a case where uh, <coughs> the, the scammer uh, uh, said that the, his, air, his airline ticket became invalid because that particular airline cut that flight out and they weren't going to reschedule. So he lost his money. So it's really, it's really kind of uh, ridiculous how the aims that they'll go to, but they do. They continue to ask until you stop. Well, in this particular case, um, the woman did not stop. I got a call from her son who tried to intercede as well as other members of the family to explain to her that this was a scam. And she ended up by cutting them off. She didn't want to talk to them anymore. And I don't mean cut them off from the, from the will. I mean, just cut them off. I don't want to talk about it. If you're going to mention this thing. I don't want to see you. I don't want to talk to you. Right. Uh, and, 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 and that was pretty sad. And he ended up by telling me that Mr. Rockwood, I, I I hate to tell you this, but I think my mom, I think I'm gonna have to see my mother homeless before she understands that this is a scam. Uh, and that's how far it can go. Uh, another case that I remember is talking to the daughter, talking to a daughter, and the daughter said that, yes, they've gone over as a family, talked to her, uh, brought over the minister, this person was attending church, which is a good sign, had another, she had social contact, uh, which is important. And, uh, and she agreed that this was a scam, and she was going to stop. And they even went to the extent of having power of attorney, gave her an allowance. They, they got information about her bank, uh, you know, comings and goings of income uh, into the account. Uh, and the next week, there was another $500 missing from her account. So even though she was recognizing this was a scam, 
it was not going to stop the love of her life from getting the money. Uh, and so she ended up totally losing about $342,000 uh, on this one scam. Now that's, that's kind of way out there scam. But for me, I, I didn't have someone who wanted to give them some aid and comfort. There, there's nothing I could do other than just to go over a tick list of things that they might want to consider. And they were doing most of them. So um, sorry to say that some folks are just really going to get caught hard on this. And, and so that person thought she was talking to a good looking guy and there he is. Looks like a good looking blonde to me. <laughs> you know, so, and she's just holding up the dollars. That's what they think of you. You might think that they have a conscience. Don't think that. Okay. I've got a sign here. It says my, I'm going to turn off my cell phone. Okay, using some bandwidth. Okay, so I want to show you this screen here just to let you know that this is not a fluke. These are some data coming from the Federal Trade Commission on scams mm -hmm. and the cost. And you can see they, on the bar graph there, this goes from 2015 on the one on the left, 2015 to 2019. Um, and there was like 84,000 reports. And these are the ones that reported. Remember I said that a lot of times seniors are less likely to report a scam. And that's what's required in order for us to stop these people. Well, of those 84,000 plus, there was $342 million lost from romance scam. And so to give you an idea, a little quick math there, uh, is that average is a little more than 4,000 per scam, per romance scam. So we're not talking small dollars here. And even if it was a dollar, I would be fighting uh, to have you keep your dollars to yourself. Because they're your dollars. You're the ones that earn them. All right, okay, so tips. The FTC, Federal Trade Commission, and how to play this safe. Uh, and both the FTC, Federal Trade Commission, and AARP Idaho, and now across the nation, are, want to give you as many tips as possible, and they have some resources that you can go to. But the main one, uh, I would tell you, is on any of these scams, never, ever send money or gifts. And on a romance scam, to someone uh, that you believe you're in love with that you haven't met in person. Um, that's, a, that's the cardinal kind of rule. <laughs> Hold and fast on that one. Draw the line in the sand. <clears throat> you can tell them, well, I got all kinds of money, but I got to see you. Uh, and, yeah, and then the, another one, which really is good, and most of these scams, there's an opportunity to have where there's some breathing space. In other words, there's a time when you get off uh, the email or the phone and you have some time to kind of take a breath. You can come out from being emotionally uh, rattled or upset or thrilled, all kinds of these emotions, and, and talk to somebody about it. Again, there you're talking about your friends and family, if you have a social group, network group. Um, and by the way, as, as a sideline, these scams make wonderful uh, conversation pieces at social events. They really do. Uh, and, and, and so, uh, what I would recommend is to have, if you have social circle that you belong to, maybe you meet on Zoom, is to ask anybody if they've had a, been scammed and you can mention about the romance scam. Anybody heard this? And you're going to have a two-hour conversation. That's the kind of communication that's really kind of needed. Okay. The other thing you can do, and I don't know if you've ever done this, um, is, is to try to go online and try reverse image and you, you can do this. If you have a favorite website uh, or search engine you have, you can go check on it and, and, and ask for re reverse imaging. Okay, are you okay, Cynthia? Oh, uh, yes, I, I just have okay. a four-year-old in so the room said, making noise, so I'm turning me off. <laughs> oh, I love animals. <laughs> I just wanted, didn't want you to, I didn't want, to, I didn't hurt. Okay, so if the image is associated with another person's name, don't match, it's a scam. So how do you remember? Stop again. Any, anytime somebody mentions, I just need some dollars for this, send it by wire, uh, you know, Western Union or gift cards, it's a scam. Just stop all cans immediately. You do that, you're out of the scam. Uh, if you're a victim of a romance scam, you you really want to fire up 
complaint. You can do that with the FBI or the Federal Trade Commission. If you go to either one of these, you can talk to somebody live, uh, like they're here, they're getting for the FCC, or you can fill out a report. Uh, and chances are, if you fill out a report, uh, they will call you back. Okay, they will call you back. All right. So, romance games. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite scams, charity, scams, uh, at least in a very generous, uh, uh, very generous folks. Uh, you can see this after in 2019, uh, over $450, $450 billion went to charity in 2019. Uh, and so charity scams are alive and well, both uh, real and fake. So how do these scams succeed? Well, they mimic or spoof is another word for that, the real thing. They may reach you by telemarketing phone, a lot of times by phone. They could do direct mail and it looks really professional, particularly after emergencies uh, or during COVID. Uh, there's been definitely an increase in that. They can email you or door-to-door -door solicitations, okay? Uh, and, but most often it's by telemarketing. And I will get two or three of these myself per year. And the charity that they're talking about sounds familiar, sounds legitimate. A lot of times it's for the police folks that you and I probably respect. You know, we like authority. We like what they do. Uh, but there's a lot of COVID has brought on fake appeals to donate to victims, like unreal <clears throat> in emergency responses. Um, and I, I recommend right after that that you say, no, thank you. I have a, my guess is, is that most of us have a charity that we already give to. It could be our religious organization. Uh, it could be uh, to a particular cause that we have an affinity to. Uh, and so my question is, why do we need to take on another one? So if you already have those, then you already have a no thank you, I, I gave it to office type of thing. Uh, and and, and uh, it's not lying, it's the truth. Um, and it's, it's just a way for you to back out of this. Or you can ask them to send you some information about the scam, or not about the scam, about the charity. And you'll find that they'll either click the phone You'll never get that piece of information. It never happened. Okay, a couple things uh, that I want to mention on this, because I don't think that you can probably read this as well as I'd like you to be able to. Uh, and that first one, it says, look up charities report and ratings. My two favorite are on the right side, the first statement there is charity watch dot org and charity navigator dot org. Those two sites, after you got off the telephone and you said, I'll have to think about this. Okay. We'll tell you, and then you look up the, you look up that site and then ask on a search that this is a scam. There's absolutely no information on this. Both of the, is uh, agencies Charity Watch and Charity Navigator are the ones that you do don that you do currently donate to, and they will tell you about the charity. They'll tell you what portion of your gift goes to the cause, which is another key. If you ask them the question, "How much of my donation will go to the program?" and they tell you ten percent. Okay, if you're following this, 10%, you gotta be kidding me. You would not give to an organization that's gonna keep 90% and right away, this person has no clue what they're talking about. All right, and I would recommend that you never give to an organization uh, that uh, give um, less than uh, 80 or 90% to the cause. Okay, so now you're talking about only 10% for administrative purposes at the very best. Okay. 
But those two agencies, you get, in other words, you have, once you get off, you got some time, I would check them out. And also, again, I, I do believe that most people in the United States, uh, if they have charity, if they do give charity, uh, they don't do it on the spur of the moment necessarily. Uh, uh, they do give it a gift through their organizations that they already give to. And that can apply to a lot of the things that are going on with COVID, a lot of the uh, weather events, both in California or the East Coast. Uh, and so our heart goes out to those folks to go to. Reporting, again, talk to friends and family about the charity. Have you neighborhood, you know, around you in your, in your, in your social circle? They say, yeah, I got a call about that too. Have a conversation. Here, you might want to, and you probably have heard of BBB, the Better Business Bureau. Here in Boise, do an excellent job. The Attorney General has a, does an excellent job uh, on, they have a fraud unit and they'd be happy to uh, tell you whether that's a legitimate charity or not and, uh, and, and what actions have been taken against the, that organization as well. So there's resources that we have once you're off the telephone or you put the letter down or you say no thank you at the door. And then reporting them, you want to use the FBI again. I notice I'm going over these things over and over again, who to report to. And that's the key to all of this is reporting. And, uh, and there it is. Again, the Better Business Bureau, the Attorney General. Again, file a complaint. And notice that all this takes time. Uh, and, and that's the one thing uh, that seniors generally have, but at the same time, they want to move on to something else. They don't want to be busy with paperwork. Um, and so these scams just continue going. So there it is, www.ftc complaint, complaint. There's also a telephone number. Now on that sheet that I hope you have, it's got these phone numbers as well. That's why I'm not these phone numbers down. Okay. So that little, that little cartoon at the bottom there is talking about these two neighbors is talking to the fence. They're just having a chat about charity scams. Here's advice for all these scams. Again, just hang up, delete, and shred. That's the simplest message that can be given on this to protect you. Hang up the telephone. You have no responsibility to these folks. They don't know, you don't know who they are. They don't know you. You could just flat out hang up. Now you could hang up lightly and say, no, thank you, goodbye. Or, or if it's a message coming through your email, delete it, all right? Uh, or if it's coming through the mail, just shred it. If it's coming out your door, then I can do it. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, I I'll consider that, but I'm not ready to do that. I'm not ready to make that decision now, maybe next year. Or uh, I want to talk to my attorney first. All right. Or I want to talk to my children first. Uh, and that will generally have the person at the door kind of moving on. <clears throat> they may not treat you nice after that, but they'll move on. Uh, don't engage. Uh, practice the exit strategies. This was a live presentation. We, we take some time right now and have everybody write down. Okay. <clears throat> Give me your phone message. How are you going to get out of this phone call? What is it? Okay, and then everybody would write about it. Maybe looking over everybody else's sheet and see what you write down. <laughs> but to have one there, it's good because if they catch you off guard, and so you're in a low mood or whatever, they have a tendency to get under your skin and take over emotionally. Because again, they're very good, and they'll move you quickly. Verify, look up, and call up. It's another way of saying hang up. You want to verify. You got off the telephone with these folks, or you have their mailing piece and they've got a phone number down there and they got the name of an organization, but put that away, put that down, go online, look them up. And as you're looking them up, you might say such and such organization, then put the word scam. And what will pop up is you'll see that the chances are that they have a scam activity report. In other words, you're not the first person to run into this. And then you can call up. You can, if it's a real organization, and call them up and ask, are you out there asking for charity right now? 
And I've done that here locally with the police, the Idaho police. I, I, they're great guys. I've got a neighbor down here. He's with the department. Uh, and and uh, I'll call up the police department after I hear this. Uh, they have a police uh, charity fund or something like that. And, uh, and I'll get my way out of that phone call. I'll call them up and say, hey, have you got something going on about asking for a charity for a police ball or something like that? And they will just very quickly. So, no, Mr. Rockwood, that's, that's a scam. And that's how quick it can be done. <clears throat> you can uh, debunk these things. Again, the key, talk to family, friends, spread the word. <clears throat> You've got a social network that you enjoy getting with, having coffee. Again, these are great conversational pieces. They really are. Um, and because everybody's got a story. You know, you got a story about your brother. I, I, I think those are great things to share with other people. Uh, the last thing we want to do is keep them to ourselves, which is probably the most often way it's handled. No, they, you just don't want to talk about it. Um, but talk about it anyway. So family emergencies. So a phone call comes in. <clears throat> I've lost my wallet, my ID, I'm stranded. Please wire money. So these are going to get your emotions going. Uh, if you care about these people, it's a family emergency. I would do about anything for any member of my family. Uh, so I get the call and all of a sudden my heart rate's going up um, and uh, my face may flush and uh, I, I want to get engaged. Your grandson is being held in jail. He needs money for bail right away. <clears throat> I've been in an accident in the hospital with no money. Please wire money now. I was just evacuated out of this building or whatever with no money. It could have been the fires in the, on the, on the West coast. Please send money now so I can, you know, stay in a hotel or motel. I was just arrested without my wallet. I got lost. I need bail money or I'm just going to have to stay in jail. These are all kinds of statements that are made uh, to get your attention. And I got a little cartoon at the bottom in there. All they have is a vacuum cleaner there. It's open and all they want is your money. I'm not necessarily saying that those are all scams. But when they start asking for money like that, you only have one alternative, and that's to verify it. Emergency scams are about family member or our, our friend in a dire situation. And they happen, and they happen quick. And most of the time, particularly with seniors, they happen at night. <clears throat> it would be you know, 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night when a phone call comes. You get a call, email or social media message from someone claiming to be a family member in distress. Um, and you're gonna to have to respond quickly. They may say that they've been arrested while traveling overseas. There was an accident, a medical emergency, other calamity, they lost all their ID, their passport and all of this, and they need some money. They definitely will impersonate your, a loved one and they do this very convincingly. <clears throat> Sometimes the voice sounds a little shaky and, and you might question that. Um, and, and sometimes what they've done is they've, uh, they've gone to your Facebook page and they uh, can see family members. And if you identify the people in the picture, they can impersonate that person. And it's pretty easy for them to do that. Uh, they play on your emotions. All scams play on your emotions. And the scammers are banking on your love and your concern will outweigh your skepticism. And it happens very quickly. Oh, geez. Yeah. They swear you to secrecy. Don't tell anybody. They insist that you wire money right away. Um, and, and, they, and they give you some options, which sound kind of ridiculous, like wire, go down to Western Union and wire this. Go down to your favorite store and buy some gift cards. Uh, and call me with the numbers on it, because that's like cash, right? Um, and you can't get that back uh, once it's gone. They understand this. Family emergency scams. So again, this is kind of, I don't expect you to be able to read all this. I'm just going to mention a couple of them. Um, is Since they've called you, you need to resist the urgency to act. you got to take your time. You need to verify the person's identity. If you get a call from a family or friend, <clears throat> then it's an emergency. I think one of the best things you can do is get off the phone, call the person for real or the person's family and ask where they are and if they're okay. That is, that, 
it works. I'm telling you, that works. Because I've had people that get through this thing and they say, well, I asked them, I said, well, what did you do? Well, I just called him. <laughs> and what happened? Oh, he was there. He said the whole thing was, it must have been a scam. And it was. So it's easy to get caught in this. So you need to get some space in all of these scams. Call another family member. For goodness sakes, what you don't want to do is wire money anywhere. So you want to report it to the FTC, and you also want to report this one to law enforcement, so your local police. And the Paul will put out and give you a case number, which is going to be important for you. Oh, somebody's there. Yeah, go ahead, let him in. It's kind of late, but that's okay. Okay, the grandparent scam. Grandma, I'm in the hospital sick. Please wire money right away. Grandpa, I'm stuck overseas. Please send money. Sounds pretty familiar to the family scam, and they are. Grandparent scam, can, they can take on a new twist, and they do, particularly in a, in a new sense of emergency, such as COVID. Uh, and uh, here's what to keep in mind. One in four seniors over 70 have experienced a grandparent scam attempt, one in four. So if we think that uh, it's rare, it's not. It's pretty darn common. <clears throat> the grandparent scam. The imposter is going to offer just enough detail about where and how the emergency happened to make it seem plausible. Again, they have taken over your emotions. They've got you what is referred to as under the ether, that's E-T-H-E-R, so they're not necessarily thinking correctly. They've called you possibly at night, 8 to 10 p.m., <clears throat> when, uh, that's past my bedtime, by the way, and then <clears throat> he or she, the scammer, turns the phone over to another scammer who pretends to be a doctor, a police officer, a lawyer, and backs up the story, the person of authority and we respect authority. And they're telling us that we have to act, and we have to act quickly, send money. The grandchild implores you to target the, you know, the victim, to target and wire money immediately, adding to this every single time. This is what they'll say. Don't tell mom and dad. Don't tell mom and dad. And in Seattle, I would talk to these folks, and I, I would ask them, what did you do? Well, I went down to Western Union and I wired the money. And of course they found, they, a little bit later they discovered it was a scam. So I'd ask, okay, so if we were doing this all over again and you were to get this, what would you do? He said, well, I'd, I'd call their mom and dad. Or better, yeah, I'd probably call them. Exactly. So I was talking to somebody who now was relaxed, a lot more rational, using common sense, and he was not uh, emotionally driven. So you can see where these things go. Emotions drive these things. <clears throat> COVID has skyrocketed parent, grandparent scams. Um, so you want to resist this urgency to act, no matter how dramatic the story is. You got to verify the, the, the caller's identity. You may have a question you can ask the stranger that they couldn't possibly answer. Now they'll probably go click with the phone. <clears throat> You've got them. I don't necessarily suggest that you play games with the caller, because again, these people are professionals at what they do, at what they do. And they also not only are going to try to get money for this imposter grandparent scam, but they're also trying to collect information on you. Again, just call a phone number for the family member, check the story out with someone new else in the family. <clears throat> so my little cartoon down here says, stay calm, confirm the caller's identity, and look for the dead giveaway and get off the phone. Okay, this is this this is the back to getting yourself back into a common sense mode, away from the ether and the wit and away from a lot of emotion. <clears throat> Even though you probably want to strangle the person out the other line by the time you figure it out it's a scam. Don't send cash, gift cards, or money transfers ever. Once the scammer gets the money, it's gone and they're gone. <clears throat> So families are losing staggering amounts of money with this scam. In 2017, according to the FTC, <clears throat> which you can go online, by the way, Federal Trade Commission, 
And you can verify this and look at these things and you'll be amazed at the information that they have on there. And these are the people who have reported it. Imagine the, what the real numbers might be. <clears throat> One in 14 people over the age of 70 reported Sunday money to fake grandchildren. This year, the number is one in four. Wow. Yeah. Total losses to friend or family imposter scams uh, last year were $26 million. <clears throat> that was for 2018. 2019, which is the latest numbers we have, it was 41 million in county. So these imposter scams, I know they sound kind of simple in a common sense to avoid them, are ramping up big time. Big time. <clears throat> so it, it makes sense to me that you're, you're the soldiers that we're counting on to spread the word here. The people who need to hear the warnings the most are not getting the message. Or they have gotten the message, maybe through an event like this or through a scam jam or through the newspaper or through their bank or other organizations that are sending on information about scams. But this is where you can help. Spread the word. Don't assume people already know about this. Even people who have gone through training need to be retrained. It's okay. It's kind of like learning CPR. <laughs> I had to do it every two years just to keep this, <laughs> my Red Cross card. And every time I learn something different because it changes. Warn your friends, neighbors, relatives, and simply... <laughs> A simple warning can help save a lot of grief. So here we go. How to avoid scams. Hang up, don't engage, and verify. Very simple, very simple message. Uh, if you take nothing away from uh, any kind of fraud presentation, this is it. Sign up for AARP Fraud Watch Network. Again, if you've got that sheet that was sent out, this number is on there, right? You can, you, you can just Google Fraud to Watch Network, uh, that, and that will come up. You can sign up for that. I would. I encourage all of you to do that. You don't have to be a member of AARP to do that, although I would encourage you to do that as well, because they've got some wonderful fraud pieces that are available to you through that. You can also do FTC.org, Federal Trade Commission. And I have order free publications on specific frauds. You can do that. However, I just found out that the FTC, like AARP Boise, is not mailing things out at this point in time. But I want you to know there's good news anyway. If you go to FTC.org, their publications are online and you can read them online. Uh, and uh, I encourage you to, to do that for any of these scams or any other scams that you. Uh, uh, would like to have some more information on. They've got it there. They have the reporting as well. So Federal Trade Commission is excellent. And that's one of the organizations that consistently get reported to, right? As well as police departments and the IRS and the FBI uh, and a better business bureau and those organizations. I implore you to freeze your credit. Um, it's vitally important. I froze mine six years ago. Um, haven't had a need yet to unfreeze it. Uh, but it's they're still frozen, uh, and those are the three organizations. It's free, again, um, and you can also order uh, to see your credit report, and uh, they say it's once a year, but that's once a year for each of these organizations. And again, I've got the phone numbers on that one sheet that I sent to you, uh, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. And I know that, uh, I think it was Experian that had some issues here a while back, uh, they have corrected those, and I have a lot of faith in these three organizations. Uh, if you're concerned about them having information or having been hacked, I want you to know, and this is from the bottom of my heart, your identity has already been stolen, not from a credit reporting agency, but all of the different hacks that have taken place over the last several years for getting account numbers and stuff. So uh, all a scammer really needs is uh, your name, possibly your address, and a telephone number. Uh, and they're well on the way to uh, they're well on the way to uh, taking your identity. So most of us have already had our identity stolen. There hasn't necessarily been any action taken against our credit, possibly because you've taken protection 
to uh, protect your credit. So I encourage you again, freeze your credit. Never give out personal information to strangers. So if I ever ask you to all put your, um, your email address uh, down so I can send you information, my guess is that some of you would do that. Well, <laughs> we don't do that at ARP. I'm not gonna ask you for <laughs> your email information because that's your private information. And there's a lot of different things I can do with your email address, uh, which I would never do, but if I was a scammer, uh, or unethical, there are some things. So just don't give up personal information. A lot of things, what's going on right now is you may get a message from your bank, which is a scam, saying that your account is good. They just need to verify your account number, all right? And so you'll get that on a phone message uh, or you'll get it on an email message. And some of you probably already have. Um, and that's a, that's a scam as well. Um, so again, there's a lot of different ways that a scammer will try to uh, get your email or get your information. It's really important uh, to stay connected to your family and friends. You've heard it before. You can pick your friends, but not your family. And, uh, you know, I understand that, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up and we all have these wonderful, wonderful memories or dreaded memories, but staying connected with your family is key um, and uh, to this and friends. If you don't have a social network, um, I encourage you to find one. ARP is a great place uh, for you to start that. I'm not trying to push that. I'm just saying that um, there's a lot of great things going on with ARP in terms of connections. Even those, even Zoom calls can help. But the main thing is that you have the ability uh, and have the awareness and the connection to reach out and ask for help or to ask for information. And that is absolutely key for any of these scams, any frauds that you may be coming uh, face to face with. I want to thank you for attending. Um, and I'm not sure where we are on time, but uh, I want you to know that uh, there's a lot of great programs still coming up. <laughs> and I think you can register up to an hour before the meeting. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to stop sharing here. And, uh, and let's see. Oh, I think I still have some more time. Uh, we got more time, is that right, Debbie? Well, how long was it supposed to last? Uh, 45 or so. Okay, so we- Yeah, so we got some time. If so any of you- Yeah, so we got, we, we got some time. If anybody would like me to elaborate on anything, I might be able to do that. Um, you can unmute yourself. I think we made that capability there. Um, and uh, if you have something you'd like to, uh, a question, for example, a lot of times people like to tell stories, but if you have a question, uh, I can probably answer that more directly uh, to you. So I'll just open it up for questions. I have a question. Um, Dennis, it, on uh, the numbers, it says the do not call number, but I have used that do not call number before, and I still get you know, the police calling me for money and, and uh, those types of things. So it doesn't seem to work. I mean, I still get scam calls, or well, what I consider scam calls. Does that really work? To yeah, to answer your question directly, yes. To answer your question completely, most of the time. Uh, there isn't any, any of the things that we're talking about that is 100% going to protect you. Um, and I would suggest that you reapply. In other words, go in there like you're brand new and do it again. I try to do that once a year, like taking my car in to get repaired or tuned up and try to do the same thing. I get my credit reports and I take, it like a, I take a half a day and I do all this stuff because uh, it does take a little bit of time. Um, so I just want you to know that, uh, it, yes, it does work, but we have to understand like some things that, uh, we run into, uh, scammers don't play by our rules. And, and so there are ways of getting around that. Um, they may spoof, which is put a fake number on the phone. If you have, if you have 
call ID. They may have a fake number on there. Uh, I still get them too. I, uh, I, I get more uh, spoof emails than calls, but I do get some calls. And uh, uh, I've gotten a habit now uh, that I don't even have my ringer on anymore. And so maybe I missed a call from my son or my daughter, which I don't want to miss. But I'm, I'm, that phone is like yours is probably with me quite a bit nowadays. And so uh, I do check it. And so if I see it, and I got a phone call and it's from my son or daughter, they're, they're trained now too, uh, that I don't usually answer my phone. Um, and that, that's kind of my way of protecting the harassment, <laughs> I guess you might say, that I feel sometimes about these scammers. Uh, I don't think I get an inordinate number. I know people that get them a lot. Uh, this particular time of the year, uh, I think I made a political donation. I still think it was a good thing to do. <laughs> but I, and I'm not saying they're scam calls, but I've had a huge increase in the number of people asking for dollar donations for uh, particular partic politicians and things. Uh, so, but yeah, do not call. It works. And the number's on that sheet, and I would call them. You can also probably do that online. Uh, and, um, and, and you can look it up. I haven't done that, but you can look them up and see what exactly it does cover. But they're not going to cover everything. You know, it's, it's kind of like a credit freeze. Credit freeze is there as a, as a measure of protection. Uh, and it's a good one. And so I look at, okay, do not call list, the credit freeze, look in your credit report, notifying uh, your banks if you want them to put on a, your, your, your account on a credit alert. Doesn't, you know, you can still get money in and out. And, uh, and the thing with the credit freeze is it doesn't affect your credit score. Uh, they don't give you a credit score on your credit report, you probably know. Uh, and so all these things are kind of added up. But, you know, the biggest ones to protect you uh, are family, friends, connections that you have. Uh, take a refresher class every once in a while uh, on fraud. And uh, I try to keep up as much as I can. Uh, but I, I, I do know that uh, uh, frauds are occurring every day. They just give a different twist to the same fraud or scam. Um, that's why if you go online and you were to click the top 10 scams, you know, uh, what we covered today and what we covered last week, and then what I did in identity theft, uh, we, we've covered uh, eight of the 10 top 10 scams out there. And these are the ones that have been reported. It doesn't mean that they're the only scams out there. So, uh, and with that information that has been out there for at least 10 or eight scams, uh, I feel that if you look at those and are diligent, uh, that you're protecting yourself pretty well. But there's nothing foolproof about this. You know, I mean, you think that of banks and hospitals and our government not getting hacked. Well, they do get hacked, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's my attempt to make it so you don't get hacked. And, uh, and these are kind of the precautions. Oh, and also, you know, if you have, a, you know, if you have good uh, malware in your, in your system, computer system, security there, and run that report uh, or, you know, run the scan on that um, every once in a while, I think you're protected. But that's a great question, super question. Okay, if there are no further questions, um, Jackson, we haven't uh, asked you, I know you came in late, but, um, and it may not even be applicable to you, but we do have a, um, an evaluation form. Can you, can you all see that in the chat? I know Cynthia can, so I guess Jackson is the only one that we don't know. Can you see the uh, link for the, evaluation form? Yeah, I just put it up there again. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm, I'm asking if all of you will please uh, complete the evaluation form. And um, before you leave. remember, we're going to have all of the classes. They will, they've all, hopefully have all been recorded and they will go online. Uh, Idaho State University is helping us with that. So uh, you can tell family, friends, no matter where they're at in the United States or anywhere, I guess, uh, that they can take these classes and you'll be notified of that. Um, any further?